childbirth, pre-hospital. Hello, I'm Angie Lomelli and I am an EMS instructor. I'm presenting you with a series of EMS educational videos. Now, whether you are a first responder, a student, or just someone simply interested in learning more about the wonderful world of EMS, these videos are for you. Now, the videos are made so that you may watch and follow along as well as practice while watching. Hopefully, you'll find these videos helpful during your lab skills and testing. Good luck with your venture, and let's get started. Performance Objective The student rescuer, first responder, will demonstrate the ability to care for mother and newborn baby during a pre-hospital childbirth normal delivery. Taking more than 15 minutes is a fail for this skill. Conditions The patient is a 30-year-old woman and this is her second vaginal delivery. In theory, the second delivery is usually faster than the first birth. The simulated patient mother will answer all questions pertaining to the history of the pregnancy and impending birth. Notes and caution. The information found in brackets is for your knowledge only and should not be stated when performing the skill. Equipment. PPE. Double gloves, sterile gloves, respirator, goggles, or face shield, and gown. Obstetrical kit. OB mannequin and infant mannequin. As a first responder, it's extremely important to have all your personal protective equipment available when dealing with pre-hospital childbirth. You should have a gown, at least two sets of gloves, you will be double gloving initially because you're dealing with a large amount of biohazard, an N95 respirator or a level two respirator, goggles and sterile gloves. OB mannequin, baby mannequin, drape sheet, placenta, umbilical cord, newborn baby bonnet, swaddling blanket. The skill begins when the student states, I would perform pin man. The student should don two sets of gloves due to the large amount of biohazard. Hello, my name is Angie. I'm an EMT. I'm going to help you. I have a few questions for you. Do you have that feeling that you wanna push, that feeling like you wanna move your bowels? If the patient says yes, then you ask for permission. May I check your vaginal area for crowning? Rescuer introduction. Rescuer states, I would perform penman. Rescuer puts on two pairs of gloves. Rescuer states, hello, my name is, I am an EMT, I'm going to help you. Do you feel the need to push or to have a bowel movement? I need to examine you to see if the baby's head is crowning. Observes for crowning. You're going to go through a series of questions and instructions for the mother. I can see that the baby's head is crowning. Your baby will be delivered soon. Please breathe through your mouth and try not to push. I need to ask you five questions. Are you under a doctor's care? Does your doctor expect any problems with the delivery? Is this your first vaginal delivery? When did your contractions start and how far apart are your contractions? Crowning, dilation, and five questions. Rescuer states, the baby's head is crowning. Your baby will be delivering soon. Please breathe through your mouth and try not to push. Note, mother may push with contractions once the delivery area has been prepared. Determination of on-scene delivery. Rescuer asks, are you under a doctor's care? Patient replies, yes. Rescuer asks, does your doctor expect any problems with this delivery? Patient replies, no. Rescuer asks, is this your first vaginal delivery? Patient replies, no, this is my second. Note, having more than one birth insinuates that the delivery will come sooner. Rescuer asks, when did the contractions begin? Patient replies, 8 p.m. last night. How far apart are the contractions? Patient replies, every two to three minutes. Note, contractions are timed from the start of one contraction and the start of the next contraction. Chart your findings. The closer the contractions, the sooner the delivery. 
preparing for on-scene delivery. The student will open the obstetric kit and locate all of the supplies that they will need for delivering this baby. You can set up everything you want exactly the way you need it in the order you need it and prepare yourself for testing. Obstetrical kit. Obstetrical kit contents. Rescuer opens the OB kit and organizes equipment and supplies strategically in the order they are needed. Drape sheet. Covers the mother for privacy by placing the drape sheet over both legs and across the abdomen. Rescuer places the obstetrical pad under the pelvis with the white cotton absorbent side up and the plastic side down. You're going to prepare the patient by placing an absorbent pad underneath the patient. Please note that the white side is the absorbent side and the blue plastic is the waterproof side. What you also want to do is you want to drape the patient for privacy. You want to have a biohazard bag nearby so you could dispose of any biohazards. You're going to be provided with three BZK antiseptic towelettes. For the purpose of this class, you will not be opening it, but you would normally open it, take out the towelette, swipe from top to bottom, and you would throw that away. You would get a second pad and you would go from top laterally to the right and to the bottom. And then once again, from the top to the left and down. These towelettes are intended for a one swipe motion only. Again, if you swipe straight down, you're gonna find a lot of biohazard. You don't want to re-swipe. You dispose of the first one right away. After you're done cleaning, you're going to remove your first set of gloves and then you're going to proceed to do the sterile glove technique and you throw these away in the biohazard bag. Cleaning the perineum. Obstetrical towelettes. Locate three OB BZK towelettes and open one at a time for cleaning. One swipe per towelette. Wipe from top to bottom starting down the center and then down each side of the vagina to clean within the inner labia. Biohazard bag. After cleaning, rescuer removes soiled gloves, top pair, using proper technique into biohazard bag. We will prepare to do the sterile glove technique. Choose the size that best fits you. A six is more like a small. This one is a 7.5 which is more of a medium. You're going to open up the tab at the corner. Pull out the gloves. These are pre-powdered. Please note that there is a left and a right side and it depicts the hands palms up. This area is a sterile plane. Nothing should be coming in and you should not be lifting your hands out of it. Once you have your gloves on, you're going to put your hands up here and slide into place. Now this one, you're gonna use the cuff only, no thumb and you're gonna slide your hand in. And that's the sterile glove technique. Now both hands are clean at this point. Now you would return to the process of delivering the baby. Sterile glove technique. Sterile gloves. Rescuer applies sterile gloves using the sterile glove technique. Labor contractions. The mother will instinctively push during contractions and rest in between contractions. When the mother reaches around 10 centimeters in dilation, the baby will present itself a little bit more like this. That means the baby's ready to come out. You're going to get a 4x4 four four and you're going to open it up, pull it out of the packaging, and you are going to 
put diffuse pressure and with the opposite hand, you're going to be pushing down on the perineum. Now, that area is going to be like kind of tight and you're trying to warm it up and stretch it out kind of like you do with a rubber band or a balloon so it doesn't tear as much. So you're going to massage that tissue so it can widen more as the baby is attempting to deliver. Now, this is really hard to do with one person, so I'm going to use the magic flap to expose the baby's head. So now I'm going to put that diffuse pressure. I would have been pushing down on the perineum. And then as the baby comes out, it's going to be face down. And then there's a natural curvature that will allow the baby to turn. At this point, I'm examining the neck for any umbilical cord, or nuchal cord. If it is there, I'm going to try to loosen it and put it over the head. And if I can't do that, I'll try to loosen it and try to get it over the shoulder at this point. If I cannot remove the umbilical cord, I would have to clamp twice and cut right in between. In this case, we don't have the umbilical cord in the way, so we can go ahead and do our first set of suctioning. We're going to suction the mouth by squeezing the syringe. So this is a bulb syringe. Squeeze the air out, allow the air to come back in, and then locate your biohazard container. Squeeze out the content there. Do it at least twice in the mouth. Because it's a larger orifice, you're gonna do one nostril, and then you'll do the opposite nostril. Now, if the baby comes sliding out, you may not have time for that. At this point, we're gonna have you hold the baby's head. Go ahead and lift and pull down. Lift and pull down. You will not break the baby. As the shoulders come out, you support it, and then the baby will be out. Pushing. Perineum. Rescuer opens sterile 4 inch by 4 inch gauze pad and places it at the vaginal opening, the crown cervical dilation point. Rescuer applies gentle diffuse pressure with one hand to baby's head to prevent sudden expulsion. Caution. Fingers rest flat on the crown. Avoid pressing on the fontanelle as the baby emerges. Rescuer uses other hand as baby's head emerges to apply downward pressure on the perineum directly below the vaginal opening, gently stretching the tissue to prevent or minimize tearing. Rescuer observes for nuchal cord when the baby's head is out. Rescuer looks for umbilical cord wrapped around the baby's neck, very common. If the cord is present, Rescuer uses clamps and cord cutter to simulate while explaining I would loosen the cord from around the baby's neck and slip the cord over the baby's head or shoulders. If neither of those were possible, I will place two clamps on the cord and cut the cord in between the clamps. If there is no nuchal cord, rescuer proceeds directly to suction the airway with the bulb syringe. Once the baby's head emerges, if possible, suction the mouth first at least two times, larger orifice, and once in each nostril, bulb syringe. The bulb syringe operates by pushing the air out when it is squeezed, and it suctions air and or fluids into the bulb when it is released. Squeeze the air out of the bulb syringe before entering the mouth or nose and release to suction in amniotic fluid. Dispose of fluids in biohazard container by squeezing the bulb syringe pointed down into the biohazard container and not into the air. Avoid poor practice habits. Rescuer applies gentle downward pressure to the head to release the upper shoulder. Rescuer applies gentle upward pressure on the head to release the lower shoulder and repeat until the baby is out. On scene delivery. Once the baby has been delivered, you want to maintain the baby at the level of the mother's hip and you want to ensure a firm but gentle grip. You take the bulb syringe and you're going to suction the mouth at least twice. It is a much larger orifice than the nose and you're going to suction the nose, one nostril each. It is at this time that you're going to pay attention to see if the umbilical cord is still pulsating. Rescuer keeps baby below the level of the mother's hips until the cord stops pulsating. Hold the baby securely using a firm but gentle grip. 
Repeat suctioning the baby's airway with the bulb syringe if fluids are present. Once the baby is delivered, you want to immediately dry and clean the body. 80% of the body heat is lost through the head, so you want to immediately place a baby bonnet or a cap. Baby assessment and care. Clean, dry, and cap. Rescuer dries and cleans the baby with the disposable towels. Covers the baby's head immediately. Note, covering the head will preserve body heat from escaping. 80% of body heat escapes from the head. Normal delivery. A healthy newborn should be responsive and have normal breathing and pulse rate. For the purpose of this skill, this is a normal delivery. If the baby was out not breathing but had a pulse, you would rub their back to stimulate them or flick their feet. It is at this point that you would provide a one minute APGAR score. You will perform a one minute APGAR after the baby is born and a five minute APGAR. APGAR stands for appearance, pulse, grimace, activity, and respirations. Attention, if the baby is out, not breathing, but has a pulse, stimulate the baby by rubbing their back and or flicking their feet. Rescuer states, the one minute APGAR score is, Rescuer explains the five components of the APGAR score. I will demonstrate how to swaddle a newborn infant. Bring the corner down of the receiving blanket. Place the infant at the top so that the ears are aligned with the top fold. If you have the umbilical cord, place the umbilical cord up. Bring the first half of the receiving blanket towards the sternum. And the objective is to secure this arm. So you bring the blanket over and you tuck it in the back. Then you will grab the bottom corner from the feet and you secure the feet as tight as you need them to be. Roll the baby over and tuck it under. Next, you will get the top part of the receiving blanket. Also bring it to the sternum, stop there. Bring the lower part of the blanket, grab the corner, and now fold it over and tuck it under. And that's how you swaddle a newborn infant. Swaddle. Receiving blanket. Wrap baby in blanket and cover baby's head. Use a newborn cap for warmth if available. Clamp the cord six to eight inches from the baby towards the mother. The second clamp is going to be two to four inches from the baby towards the mother. You're gonna give the mother the baby and encourage nursing, only if the parent chooses to nurse the baby. The last thing you're gonna do is wait for the placenta to deliver. What you will not do is you will not pull on the placenta. You will allow for the placenta to deliver within 30 to 60 minutes in the same fashion the baby was delivered vaginally. You may want to inspect to make sure it's complete. You will place the placenta in a bag. The placenta will remain connected to the cord and to the baby unless there's an emergency and it requires you to cut the cord. Clamping. Clamps. Once the umbilical cord has stopped pulsating, the rescuer will clamp in two places without cutting unless there is an emergency. Rescuer states, the cord has stopped pulsating. I will place the first clamp six to eight inches from the baby towards the mother. I will place the second clamp two to four inches from the first clamp closer to the mother. Bonding and recovery care. 
Rescue replaces the baby on the mother's abdomen or chest to encourage breastfeeding, but only if the mother chooses to feed. Note, breastfeeding stimulates the uterus to contract and reduces bleeding or hemorrhaging. Rescue replaces the baby and the mother in a position of comfort to ensure the baby is being held safely and securely. Recovery Care Rescuer states, I place the placenta in a plastic bag for transport. Note, the placenta may deliver 30 to 60 minutes after the baby has been delivered. Allow the placenta to deliver on its own and do not pull on the cord. When it's time to massage the uterus, you're going to place one hand on top of the pelvic bone and the opposite hand will find the general area of the abdomen to massage the fundus. You're not going to massage hard. You're not going to push in. That's dangerous. You're just going to gently massage as if you were kneading dough. This will stimulate the uterus to contract and to also reduce the amount of bleeding. You're going to repeat this every five minutes. And you can also instruct the mother on how she can do it for herself as well. Massage the fundus. Rescuer states, I massage the uterus every five minutes to keep it firm and minimize bleeding. Rescuer places hand on the upper pelvic region with palm facing umbilicus and the other hand massages the area of the umbilicus. Note, massaging the fundus is like kneading dough gently. Do not push or squeeze hard. Your skill will end when you assess the perineum for bleeding. You will find some blood, but your concern is excessive bleeding. You will place a peri pad with the white cotton absorbent side towards the mother. The opposite side will have a plastic non-absorbent side. And you will finish your skill by stating that you would examine the baby and provide a five minute APGAR score. Bleeding, peri pad, and five minute APGAR. Rescuer states, I assess the perineum for profuse bleeding. Note, minor bleeding is normal. Excessive bleeding, hemorrhaging, is a life risk for the mother. Rescuer states, I place the peri pad on the perineum with the absorbent side on the vagina. Caution, if the pad becomes saturated with blood in less than a half an hour, suspect hemorrhaging. Rescuer states, the five-minute APGAR score is... Rescuer will explain the five components of the APGAR score. This concludes your instruction. Thank you for watching Lamelli EMS Productions. I hope you enjoyed the training video. We look forward to producing more in the future. Remember, live for today, learn for tomorrow.